Hello, everyone, and welcome back to DSP versus the Internet, episode 75. We're now heading into our third hour, and that means it's submissions to your videos from people who are submissions members of the community. Let's go. The prettiest fast food restaurant, Most Cafe. I'll be honest. This says it's a Japanese fast food restaurant. Does this look like a Japanese fast food restaurant to you? It doesn't seem to have that vibe to me. It seems like it's just like a more generalized restaurant, right? Yeah, look. Like bur a burger and, and onion rings. I mean, this is fake. This is plastic food. I guess the egg there. Isn't that supposed to be like a Japanese katsu with curry? One cup of tea, one cup of chocolate, and the wasakayaki rice burger pitney with a uh, oh, rice tea. burger? And then one kimchi salad. Rice burger. Never had that before. They bring your food out to you. That's why they give you that little number. Hot fruit tea. Oh, I forgot my logo. Oh, I guess we'll leave it off so you can see the cost of everything. There you go. Fresh fruit and a pot of tea. So it has some fruity flavor. That's cool. Oh, a ton of tea. Is it free refills? I usually do put sugar in tea. Tea is quite bitter without sugar. That's something I usually go for. Although I drink coffee black, so go figure. Disgusting. This is disgusting. Whoa. What is that? Oh, is that like... I think it's like Loco Moco, where it's a beef patty with gra gravy poured on it. I think that's what that is. And that's chicken katsu curry right there. <clears throat> yeah. Yep, chicken curry rice plate. For fast food, dude, that's not bad at all. $8? That's only $8. Look at that. That's damn good for eight bucks, man. It even comes with a side salad. Most, most combo meals now in America are over $10, pretty much. Like, there's almost no combo meals below $10 now. A special egg. Hard-boiled egg deep-fried with a crispy shell. Wow, I've never had that before. I wonder what that's like. Yeah, deep-fried egg. Sorry, I have a cold, guys. My nose is running. My bad. The chicken cutlet with the gravy. <clears throat> it looks good. For fast food, that looks damn good, man. It looks a little overcooked, though. It does. The meat looks a little overcooked, but with the, with the, the curry sauce, it probably tastes great. All right, I want to know what that other... Yeah, this is what I want to know. Beef demi-glaze? So is that... It looks like a beef, like a, a burger patty. With some kind of a rich gravy on it, right? It was very similar to the other one, but it's beef instead of chicken. You know, mini wok for your, your salad. <laughs> uh. Cherry tomatoes can be overwhelming unless they're the sweet kind. It can be pretty acidic. We already saw you eat the egg. I want to know what the beef is like, man. Show us the beef. <laughs> eh, I probably wouldn't like that that much because it's overcooked. I like I like to have a liquidy center. So let's see. Oh, that's going to be overcooked, huh? Oh, man. Look how dry that is. Oh, uh, man. That's dry. That is some dry ass beef right there. Again, it probably tastes decent with the with the gravy on it, but that beef is way overcooked. 
Look at that. Ugh. There's no juicy meat bite there. You can see it's dry, dude. Only the sauce is moist. Nah. Anything else from this place? Oh, quinoa and a grain salad. Okay, Look at this. Enjoy. Quinoa and grain salad. Only four dollars? The vinaigrette sauce or something? Yeah, it's probably vinaigrette. What the hell is tapasco? Never heard of that. No, quinoa. It's, it's not quinoa, it's quinoa, right? That's how you pronounce it, quinoa. What is that? Cheese? Egg mayo. Salty egg mayo. Ugh. So this is a Osaka Yaki rice burger plate with a vegetable smoothie. That's a burger? Does that look like a burger to you? That looks like a mess, is what that looks like. It looks like it's going to go everywhere. <laughs> Veggie fruit combo drink. I've had those before. They used to have those at um, Jamba Juice. They used to have a really good one that was like orange citrus with carrot. Then they discontinued it. That was my favorite drink they had there. That looks like kale, kale and something mm -hmm. else. Mm. <laughs> well, actually, it's a real battered onion ring, so that's good. The real onion inside. Of that oh. processed crap. Yeah, that looks good. Fry looks all right. Looks pretty good. Puffy. Puffy fries are really good. That was just like a mess. Like, how do you eat that? Right? Rice burger inspired by Okonomoyaki, a Japanese pancake. How do you eat it? It's messy. Exactly. Challenging to eat burger. Uh, those look like those dried salmon flakes on there, right? There's an egg in there. What else is in there? <laughs> no idea. Well, you're out of tea. You're in trouble now. But nobody eats the fruit out of there. No one does that. <laughs> Is that it? Or is there something else? Fruity donut ice cream. Fruity donut. Well, it is a donut and fruit on top of ice cream. That's really it, huh? <laughs> That's silly. Dude, if they eat all that food, they're eating, like, so many calories. It's ridiculous. Okay, let's see what's next. <clears throat> Whoa. Whoa. What the hell? <clears throat> what happened? Oh, look. Oh, shit. Whoa, that was close. Damn, that was close. This brave man went through strong currents of flood to save two children. Wow. He really sacrificed his own safety for strangers. What a hero. Oh, look at that, there's freaking beams in the road, man. <clears throat> Not many people will take the time out of their life to save others. What a fella. A lightning bolt struck this car, and the oh entire team immediately come to their rescue. Holy shit.
The world will be a better place if we help each other like this. This Canadian randomly got out of his car just to brush off the snow from the rear windshield of the car in front of him. <laughs> this man quickly saved a little kid whose brakes were broken. He was truly at the right place at oh the right God, time. Oh my God, look at that! Damn! That was lucky as hell. That kid would've went right to the street. That was insanely lucky. <clears throat> oh, it's a dog! There's a dog stuck over there. Oh no! Oh, poor dog. What's weird about that, though, is that most dogs would just swim, right? Why is this dog so afraid of the water? <laughs> Here we go. Got him. Nice. Oh, my God. Wheels. Where did it even come from? A construction worker fell and ended Holy up hanging shit. by a safety tether above the highway. Thankfully, this clever bus driver stopped so that guy could safely get on top nice. of the bus. Nice! What a nice bus driver, man. What a nice guy. In an amazing feat of kindness and reflex, this stranger in Seattle ran to save a woman's car that slid down the road. Holy shit! Whoa! Just when we begin <clears throat> to lose hope in humanity, we find this adorable kids who shows us a what we're missing. Save the cat. Oh man. Not only did he save the cat, but he also thanked the driver for stopping. This family was on vacation when they spotted a dog stuck in icy waters and came to its rescue. Is this your Poppy, please be careful. Poppy, please, you're on the ice, you're on the freaking ice. Poppy, what a poor be dog. Careful. <laughs> Their dog's name is Snowball. <clears throat> I got him. Oh, he's giving them his gloves. Wow. What a nice guy. This little boy's quick thinking <clears throat> saves her mother from falling. That mother has a great grip. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn, she's strong to hold on that long. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, man. This man. All right, we'll watch like one more. I want to watch the whole thing. It's going to take forever, but damn. Used his shirt to save an animal, <clears throat> keeping it warm. What a lovely man. What kind of an animal is it? I can't tell. Is it a possum? I think that's a very wet possum. Stoke possum. Okay. All right, let's go to another video for the, to end this part. So <laughs> YouTube made some really weird updates recently. And, what and this is only two weeks ago. Yeah. YouTube has been doing tons of updates in the last couple of months, a lot of which they announced and some they never did. So it's confusing trying to keep up with what they're doing. Let's see what this one is he's talking about. What makes them even more odd is the fact that they have really nothing to do with what we do most on YouTube which is to watch videos. So I want to know your thoughts. And it was also an opportunity to test my new background that yeah. took an entire week to 3D print. Is it any good? We've been raging on about the power of YouTube's community posts for years, 
but I'm still not sure any of you are convinced. If you put a little bit of time into it every day, you can build a big audience. For us, we get millions of impressions and tens of thousands of engagement from community posts that nice. takes 1% of the time <clears throat> of a full on video. There is no excuse since virtually all of you have access to it. Start posting one community post a day for an entire year, because who knows? I'll be, I'll be honest with you guys, all right? I don't do a lot of community posts on this channel or on my throwback channel, but on DSP Gaming, I post up the schedule once a day. I post up all of my streams. And every once in a while, I do a poll or I want feedback. I just don't get a lot of engagement with it. I feel like if people did engage with the community post more, I'd be more convinced to post more, right? <clears throat> if I have a thought, I would just post it up there. But it seems like not a lot of people engage with it. I don't know why. It's just the same as video comments or anything else. Like... You could start a discussion on there. I, I see all comments. I moderate them so trolls can't get the people there. So I don't I don't know why people don't seem to embrace community posts more often. It just seems like it's an afterthought for most people. You know, back in the day before YouTube redesigned the site 10 times, YouTube channel pages were, were like social media pages where people would constantly have conversation and post up and like things. And it just seems like that's gone away and it's YouTube's fault. <clears throat> Audience may end up seeing them here. Yeah, the YouTube homepage, sacred ground, prime real estate. And yet all of a sudden, those precious thumbnails were being invaded by community posts. Now at mm. first I thought it was just me or a glitch or some isolated YouTube test. But when I polled our audience on guess what, the community tab, I learned that more than half of you were seeing exactly the same thing. Oh, no, that's uh, absolutely, 100% he's right. Um, <clears throat> I noticed, um, in my feed, you get your, if you look at your feed of everyone you're subscribed to on YouTube, you'll see all their new content. I started seeing community posts pop up there and I was like, huh? Like I wasn't used to that. I'm just used to like new videos appearing, but now all the community posts show up there too, for some reason. Community posts <clears throat> on the home feed of a mobile app is nothing new, nor is a dedicated community shelf on the browser desktop experience. But for both of these, you either have to scroll or swipe to get to them. But this was different. These community posts were the first thing I was seeing when I started a YouTube session. That is oh, a very okay. I don't, I don't even know about that. Risky I don't know about that because I like never go to the YouTube homepage. I have no reason to ever check it out. So I've never even seen that. It's for YouTube to test <laughs> new stuff. And it mustn't have worked because 24 hours later, everything was back to normal. Uh -huh. Maybe it was something to do with the fact that some of these community posts were, were ancient. Old. Anyway, had this been the extent of my new and weird experiences with community posts on YouTube, I probably wouldn't have bothered making this video. But then something really interesting and potentially very exciting happened. We came across this post from a channel called Froggy Crossing. Uh -huh. I was talking about something called community spaces. This apparently would be a place where people from the community could create their own posts on this community space and interact with each other. Not really knowing what this meant, we went to Froggy Crossing's channel page and we found this. Discover Froggy Crossing's Whoa. community space. This looked very new and very beta as it stated, so we tapped on it. And what we found that we weren't just seeing posts from Froggy Crossing, we were seeing posts from, well, anyone. And these posts were getting a significant amount of engagement. Imagine if you're a fan of a creator and your posts on their community space are getting hundreds of likes and dozens of comments. That is quite a nice injection of dopamine into the influencer arm, especially if you're a creator yourself. But what does all of this potentially mean? Uh, I think YouTube has just turned into Reddit. Now we yeah, have seen to copy. YouTube try social features before, <laughs> such as stories and direct DMs, and all of them have been quietly axed. But community posts have stood the test of time, and this seems to be evidence that YouTube wants to double down on this feature in a big way. On the other hand, this could just be another very targeted test, because I couldn't find any information about community spaces anywhere save for this single channel on YouTube. Wow. Whether this feature gets out of beta or not, <clears throat> it seems to suggest that YouTube doesn't just want the creator to interact with their audience. YouTube wants the audience to interact with each other within the creator's sphere of influence. Thankfully, posts can be filtered by just what the creator posts to the community. But I have no idea if there's any moderation going on for all of these posts that are appearing on somebody's Yeah, community. there there would be because Whenever you post anywhere, whether it's in a channel comment or the community tab, 
um anything that gets posted is considered a comment and you can set it up that it will not show up until you approve it and that's how i have it on my channels because i need that because of the amount of troll content so i could set this up and you would post up and i would check it every day and approve and then these would show up and then any responses i would approve so basically it could work i'd have to micromanage it but it could definitely work and it could lead to a vibrant community of positive people posting sharing and having a fun time together um <clears throat> It would actually be even better if I could approve certain people to be moderators on it and do it for me. So that way I don't have to micromanage it, which I think I could also do. I think that's very possible. So, hey, I would not disapprove this at all. This is, it would be like the replacement for the old forums I used to have, but they became unmanageable because I wasn't going to sit there moderating them all day. That's exactly what this would be. Your own community on YouTube based on your YouTube channel. You could have moderators working on it. You wouldn't need anything separate. Right. Someone just said you wouldn't need Reddit. You wouldn't need a Discord. You could just do everything through there. Yeah. Technically, that's correct. Now, if this launches and works, this could be something positive for everyone. I just, I wish more people would use it. Like, I would love to have that. I just hope people will use it. Because right now, like I said, even with community posts, I don't get much engagement. So. <clears throat> okay. That's it for... Part five, the next part will be the final part of DSP versus the internet for the week. Thanks for watching. See you then.